I'm so glad to see you, Auntie Ravane, I said. So am I, sweetie, she replied, looking towards my mother. Grim, our guests need to get going soon, before the Enclave patrol or some pony else notices their ship. Their weird captain wanted to say goodbye to Shadow before they left. Something about drinking themselves stupor? Looking back at my mother, I could have sworn I saw a sad look in her eyes when she took me in, hugged Vervain. In a second it passed as she got to her hooves, saying, Yes, I think it's a good idea that they head out too. We'll be on our way shortly as well. How about you go check on Wingnut and Cookie Bite? Let them know it is time. Also, if you can get word of the Queen too, that would be a lot of help. Vervain nodded. I can take care of it. She turned her attention to Aura and said, I've let the other Shadow Talons know about the threat to Cookie Bite and the rest of the base. They're scouting the area to make sure no Steel Rangers are around here. Good. I have a few wings to go assist the Queens in making sure those bastards stay away from freedom. Aura said, getting to her hooves. V, I'm heading out again. I'll need you to keep an eye on the Talon Company for me, like before. V looked a little shocked. But you just got back. You can't just keep leaving like this. You got responsibilities. Aura looked over and reached up to put a hoof on her sister's shoulder. I know. But right now, I'm not much used to the Shadow Talons as I am. They need a griffin to run things, not a pony. Till I get my old body back, you're gonna have to take over for a while. As for me, I need to make sure that Shadow's safe and I have my own role to play in all this plans. So, can I trust you and the others to keep them running? She sighed and nodded. Yeah, always. Still, I'd rather you be the one keeping things going. The former Red Talons followed you when Crimson Callion fell. Not me, not Sin, not even Fletch. Even as a pony, they know it's you. They respect you. They follow you. Just don't forget that. What will you do if you get your old body back? What if you're stuck like this forever? Aura smiled. Then I'll leave the Shadow Talons in your claws. I have faith in you, and I know you have what it takes to run this talent company to make it even better than the red talons were. We looked down at her talons, looking a little shy as she said, I may be older than you, but I'm not the leader you are. Aura laughed. You're twice the leader I am, V. You're strong and smart. I know for a fact that Mom was hoping for you to be her replacement after she retired. Every griff thought it was me because of my strength and my fighting ability. And I was never meant to be the leader. You were, and still are. We smiled and then nodded. Thanks for that. I'll do my best. But I'm not taking over fully unless I have to. Deal. Deal, Aura said, hugging her sister before pulling away and looking back at me. Let's go say goodbye to Gunny and the weird crew. Then I think it's time for us to leave. Sounds like a plan, I said with a smile. Mom spoke up before we left. You two meet us in the back when you're finished, okay? Can do, Aura said. See you soon, Mom, I said, then said my goodbyes to the others before following Aura out of the room. A few minutes later, we were a couple blocks down from the FNF Tools building and standing in an area of freedom just outside the walls where most of the buildings had been destroyed during the war. The bitter cob was there, looking like it was ready to take off at any moment. The crew were running all over it, preparing for the launch. Captain Gunny, Sunspot, and Elliot, however, saw us coming and met us at the bottom of the gangplank. Gunny, of course, was the first one to open his trap. Ah, ye be finishing your ride on the bitter cob, I be seeing. Good on ye, lass, good on ye. Had Gunny worried about ye for a death pit there, with all the booming from Enclave and whatnot? Hey, at least it was a good time, Gunny, I said with a chuckle. Aye. That be Captain Gunny to you, he said angrily. But is it really? I said with a laugh. Sunspot rolled her eyes for a moment after nodding. I let him have his title back this morning. He's not much use to me now, honestly, and he's proven himself for the last few days. He really has. And I don't know if what we do anyway with that ship, now that we're retiring from being Sky Pirates, Elliot said. Wait, what? I asked in shock. What do you mean? 
Ah, both them were quite salty with old Gunny after his mishap with Dawnclave and whatnot, so they both decided to leave Gunny's crew. Sad a lot, but it'd be being okay. That'd be the life of a pirate. Savvy? Gunny said with a laugh. So, you two are staying around here then? What are you going to do? I asked. Sunspot grinned. Well, we talked with Aura while you were out, and she's letting us join the Shadow Talons. That's right. I've seen them fight, and I'm impressed. They're both from before the war, too, so I know they can handle most situations. With our numbers depleted after the fall of Crimson Canyon, I need creatures like them, Laura said. But I thought only griffins could join Talon groups, I said. Laura shrugged. Normally, yeah, but technically they're both half griffins, so that's good enough for me. Also, my sisters like them, so I couldn't really say no. It was V's idea in the first place. Elliot laughed. We also wanted to get away from the pirating stuff, too, and do something with our lives. Also, way out here, we don't have to worry about that ghoul pony finding us. And that's one reason we joined up with the crazy pony anyway. Oi! How many times does Captain Gunny be needing to tell ya? Captain Gunny's not crazy. He's mad. There's a difference. Gunny said from the gangplank. Yeah, I know, Gunny. Elliot said throwing me a wink before turning to face the old captain. Just be careful out there, all right? You might drive us nuts and all, but you're the first pony who treated us like we weren't monsters or tools. I hate to hear the Enclave caught up with you or something like that. I could have sworn I saw a tear in the old pony's eyes before he turned away, saying, Y'all best be getting out of here now. Gunny be needing to get ready for luncheon and leaving and such. Sunspot moved closer to him and kissed the top of his tricorn hat. Keep safe, you old mad captain. Yeah, boss. We're gonna miss ya, Elliot said before they both picked up a set of satchels and headed back towards the FNF tools. Once they were gone, Gunny turned back to me. He allowed out a heavy sigh as he said, Be listening close, Shadow. You got a long road ahead of ya. Be sure you be washing your back. You mean watching, right? I asked. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, too. Just don't be straining your neck, he said with a small smile. Gunny's being serious, like, though. Make sure you watch out. You got a lot of enemies and all that, and Captain Gunny would be right upset if you got yourself killed out there. I'll be careful, I promise, I said. Good, good. Oh, and if you'll be running into any trouble, or if you'll be needing a ride, just send word to old Captain Gunny, he said with a mad smile. How would I do that when you spend most of your time on the other side of Equestria? I asked. He came closer and took my foreleg with my pit muff on it and then did something before letting me go. There'll be a channel that secrets like that for. Captain Gunny just added it to your leg terminal. Send Gunny word if you be needin' a mad pirate. Just don't be asking to go gambling. Gunny be stealing your booty. <laughs> Gunny just messing with ya. Pirates don't actually be saying booty. I looked down at my Mark II and saw the channel he was talking about, marked as Bitter Cobb on my broadcaster. I smiled, saying, Thanks, Captain. And also, make sure you get those caps back from Bottle Cap. I don't want to hear her roasting your ass because you stole from her. Ah, don't be worrying about Captain Gunny. He wouldn't dare mess with that crooky, crazy crook. Nah, he wouldn't. Now, be off with ya. You got some other places to be, he said before walking back up the gangplank and yelling at his new crew. Get a move on, you lazy cunts. Captain Gunny got some looting and other mad stuff like that to be doing. A moment later, the gangplank was pulled up, and as Aura and I backed away from the airship, then the engines came to life. With a boom that echoed off across the buildings behind us, the bitter cob was off, heading east back towards home. I watched it climb higher and higher until it was nothing more than a speck in the cloud-covered sky. When they were finally gone, I turned towards Aura. I'm gonna miss him. She rolled her eyes. 
He was gonna trade you for his wife who went missing 20 years ago? Yeah, maybe. But he said he really wasn't gonna do it. I said with a laugh. Yeah, sure, and I'm a dragon. She said with a small laugh. You look pretty cute for a dragon. I teased as we turned to head back towards FNF Tools. Nora laughed. Damn right I do. It's the slightly radioactive air from the Everfree. It does a many number of wonderful things to one's complexion. You should have seen me before. As we walked, we kept teasing each other about this and that, laughing the entire time. It wasn't until we were almost back at the Shadow Talon's base when I realized that it was the first time in a while that I'd laughed this much or felt this good. Either those sleeping potions were helping, or maybe just being around family and friends was doing it. Either way, for once, I just felt like a normal pony. Even if it wouldn't last long, I'd take what I could get. Right before we were about to head around the building to the back area to meet with my mom, I pushed Aura against the wall, and before she could ask what I was doing, I pressed my lips to hers and took the last moment to just enjoy her. When we finally pulled apart, a little breathless, she said, What was that for? I kissed her quickly one more time before answering. I just want you to know that I love you, Aura. No matter if you're a pony, or a griffin, or a dragon. I don't care what you look like. You're mine, and I'm yours. I just don't want you to ever forget that. All right? She set her forehead on mine, saying, Forever and always, in this life and the next. I'll always find you. I'll always be with you. I'll always be yours, and you mine. As those words flooded over me, I felt a stab of pain in my head for a moment, as the world around me seemed to melt away, almost like entering a memory orb. Only this lasted only for a moment. I saw rain falling around me, lightning flashing in the distance. I was lying over the body of a griffin, his broken body and bloody. I felt my face move down towards his, my horn glowing as the last of the spell I was casting finished, my lips saying to the griffin, Forever and always, my love, in this life and next, I will find you. I will always be with you. I will always be yours, and you mine. For all time, let our souls be bound as one, and let our love live on throughout time. I blinked, and the vision, or whatever it was, vanished, and I found myself on the ground, looking up into Aura's eyes. She looked worried as she asked, Shadow, are you all right? I shook my head, the memory fading from my mind like water into a stream. The only thing I could recall after a moment was the voice I heard sounded a lot like moonlight. I shook my head again and said, Sorry, I think I just need some water. I really haven't got my energy back to full yet, and it's getting hot out. Yeah, are you sure that's all it is? She asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry. This isn't Aquila taking over or anything. I said as I got back to my hooves. She let out a sigh of relief. Good. I'm just worried about you, that's all. I know, but don't be. I'll let you know if Aquila starts taking her ugly head back over again. I said with a smile. All right. Well, let's get to your mom. I'm sure she's dying to get going, Laura said, leading me on. I followed for a moment, and a moment later I found myself in a large courtyard-like space just beyond the FNF Tools Company building. A few griffins were around, along with Solstice, Stardust, Windthrasher, Wingnut, Cookie Bite, Violet, Doricalis, Vervain, and my mom. They all looked happy when I came around the corner. None of them as much as Wingnut, though. As soon as he saw me, he ran over and nearly knocked me down, tears flowing as he hugged me tight. Shadow! I'm so happy you're back! I've wanted to come see you ever since you arrived, but Vervain said I had to let you get your sleep, and then you had to meet with Grimm and more, but now you're here. I'm so happy you're alive. I returned his embrace with a smile. I'm happy to be back, and I'm glad you're alive too. I paused as I realized I was almost able to look him in the eye without having to look down. Hey, kiddo. Did you grow? Stardust laughed. Kid's going through a growth spurt, I think. Wingnut smiled wide. Yeah, I'm almost as tall as you now. <laughs> That's not saying much. Aura teased as she ruffled his mane with her hoof. Oh, Aura, that hurts. He 
he said, pushing her hoof away. Sorry, boss, I keep forgetting, she said. Then she went to stand in front of my friends with Wingnut and I behind her. She cleared her throat and said the rest gathered. All right, so all you know the plan going forward. All except for Shadow here and for good reason. In a few minutes we'll be leaving and while we're gone, you all need to make sure to stick to that plan. And that's right, Vervain said. As far as most of the area knows, Shadow's dead. The carrier vanished in a blast of magic over a week ago. The Steel Rangers know Shadow's alive due to what happened yesterday, but as far as the rest of the groups around New Pegasus know, they all believe she's dead. Because of this, we've seen more activity from some of the other factions around the area. The Unchained Talons may stop to come after the Shadow Talons, or the NLR might try to retaliate against the Steel Rangers. It's up to you to make sure that we keep freedom and the Strip safe. We've worked out of a deal with Mr. Tops to help protect this area from what may come. Exactly, Aura continued. We'll only take contracts right now that help locals, unless you're one of my griffins working on keeping an eye on the Unchained and the Steel Rangers. You know who you are and what to do. We need to keep up the ruse that Shadow's gone. This will buy us time to do what we need to do for her. When she's better, we'll all be able to bring her back, and the courier can live up to her name once again. Mr. New Pegasus is also helping us by broadcasting that there isn't any sightings of Shadow. How long will we be gone? I asked. Mom spoke up next, looking over at me. We can't tell you anything, Shadow. Everybody here knows the plan, or at least part of it. You need to stay in the dark. Fine, I said with a bit of a huff. Stardust spoke next. Violet will be sending two of her alicorns down soon to help protect us. Doorstop and a few other Dashites are going to come help as well. Remember to stick to the plan, and if anything happens, you bring it up to V. She's the only one who will be able to get into contact with whoever needs to be called in. Or I spoke up again. Now, I want all of you to fly off. Everything starts in five minutes, and I want you all in place. Fly fast, fly safe, and stay strong. The griffins around us cheered, then in a flash of multicolored wings, they were gone, flying off in all directions. Once they were gone, I was left with my friends and family. Bite came over to me while I saw Stardust go over to hook up our sky carriage. You have a minute? I nodded. I think I have five. What's up? She looked a little shy as she said, I heard what you did to the Steel Rangers. I just wanted to say thank you for not telling them where I was. I promised Rusty I'd protect you, and even though I've done a crappy job of that so far, I'm still trying my best, I said. She smiled a little, something I didn't see much on Bite's face. You're doing all right, for a stupid bug. Hey. I thought that was what you called Wingnut. I teased, and I got more serious. Thanks again for helping me while I was stuck back east. I couldn't have made it back if I didn't have you get Aura and Solstice for me. She shrugged. It was the least I could do. So, are you going to be staying here while I'm gone? I asked. She shook her head. I can't. The Steel Rangers are looking for me. Vervain thinks it'd be safe for me to go with you than to be here. Also, you might need Wingnut and I for part of the plan. You'll understand when this is all over, though. I thought you didn't want to be around my uncle or my mom, I said. I didn't, and I still find it hard to be around them. But thanks to Wingnut and Windthrasher, I realize that I can't hold a grudge forever. Sooner or later, it'll just eat away at me until I'm as mean and angry as my mother. Also, I've known a little about them while you were missing, and honestly, they aren't so bad. I haven't forgiven them yet, but I might never do so, but I'm trying, she said. I smiled as Wingnut said, Yeah, Bite's doing a lot better since Vervain's been around. I think she looks up to her. Bite's eyes went wide. I do. She's amazing. She's so smart and knows so much about tech. Vervain chuckled as she came up behind the filly. I know that and more, Cookie Bite. 
She then shifted her gaze to me. You need to get into the sky carriage now. You'll be leaving soon. Wait, aren't you coming? I asked. She shook her head. I'm needed right here now. Also, there's enough room for the rest of the party who's going with you. I looked at her sadly. I want you to be with me, Annie Vervain. I don't know if I can do this without you. She pulled me into a hug, saying softly, You've done a lot of amazing things without me, Shadow. You don't need me for this. Just remember to stay strong and safe. Her voice got quieter. I know your mother has a plan, but I still don't fully trust her. If she does something she shouldn't, make sure you get as far away from them as possible. Do you hear me? But she's trying to... I started to say, but she interrupted me. Do you understand? She asked again. I nodded. Yes, ma'am. Good, now get going. I love you, and I hope I see you soon. She said, letting me go. I love you too, Aunt Hippervane. I said, before leading the filly and colt towards the sky carriage. When I got to the sky carriage, Aura was just saying to my mother, We need to be off in two. Are you sure you have everything you need? Did you make sure to let her know we're coming? Everything's ready now. Now, get inside so Stardust can take off. Mom said. Aura sighed, then nodded as she got into the sky carriage. Solstice joined her, giving me a wink as she passed me. Wingnut followed, then Bite, a shadowy form of my uncle following. Before I could get in, however, Violet came over to me, saying, Shadow, before you go, I need to ask you a question. Yeah? What's up? I asked. You met with the goddesses while you were in Hoofington, didn't you? She asked. I nodded. Well, kind of. She spoke through another holocorn, but yeah, I did. Let me guess. She wants to take my amulet and give it to her? That was the price for her. she demanded. Am I right? She asked. I sighed. Yeah, in exchange for her some knowledge and not killing Aura while she was flying back east. But I don't see myself trying to take that from you. Even if she did say she'd let you keep your own mind and all that. I don't trust her. But I do trust you. So don't worry about it. She smiled and said, I will not worry for now, but you should know that breaking a deal with her is a death sentence. We will talk about this more when you return. I look forward to it, I said with a smile. Me too. Now be gone. I have my own part to play in all of this. Safe travel, Shadow, she said before vanishing in a flash of light. Wind Thrasher came up to me and put a hoof on my shoulder. Hey, ready to go? I looked back at her and nodded. Yeah, let's get this over with. She led me into the sky carriage right after my mom. It was a little cramped with so many inside, but it wasn't too bad. I nestled up to Aura as I felt Stardust take off, pulling the sky carriage high into the air. I was just about to start asking some questions when there was a flash of blue light from outside of the carriage, and a moment later we were nowhere near New Pegasus. What the hell just happened? I asked as I looked out the windows and we saw we were now over the mountains far west of New Pegasus. Mom chuckled. Part one of the plan done perfectly. What do you mean? I asked, still wondering what happened. Aura answered. Violet's been soaking up a lot of radiation so she could transport us this far. It's hard to keep any pony who might have been watching us from following or telling any others what direction we're heading. Oh, I guess that was a good idea, but you could have warned me, I said. Where's the fun in that? Also, you don't get to know anything of what's going on from here on out. You don't even really get to know where we're going, Mom said. I thought we were going to Lost Alicorn, I said. Maybe, maybe not. All you need to know is that we're doing this to end her. Now, take that sleeping potion you got from Sheena. The rest of the trip... You get to be in a nice dreamless sleep, Mom said. Do I really have to do that? I asked, thinking this plan of hers sounded stupid. Yes. Now drink up and take that pill for your magic. When you wake up, we'll be at our destination for the most part, she said. Aura pulled the small pill and bottle potion out at once. She is right. 
Now take your meds, and we'll see you in a few hours. I rolled my eyes and did as she asked. Fine, but I hope you all give me a proper explanation when this is all over. I barely finished before I fell into a dreamless sleep. I awoke with my body on fire, or at least it felt like that. I felt a lot like I had when the sky carriage crashed back near the kingdom. I also knew something wasn't right. First off, my face was lying on a hot, sandy surface. Second, it was too quiet. And third, I knew something must have gone wrong, because no pony seemed to be around me. I lifted my head when I finally heard something not far off. It sounded like a great body of water sloshing up onto a beach. Then my nose started to work and I could smell salt and fish. Cracking my eyes open slowly, I found myself laying on a beach a few inches away from a vast body of water. I slowly got to my hooves and looked around, my body screaming in pain as I tried to move. I could see what looked like an old dock in the distance with a rusty roller coaster and ferris wheel on it. From other side, I just saw more of the beach, bones of ponies scattered all over the place, almost like it was an old graveyard. On the shore, and slightly in the water, old zebra war machines were rusting away. Then I turned my head, finding the quiet of this place to be eerie. It was then that I knew where I had to be, as I looked at the large, dead city behind me. A tower I knew from one of Night Stalker's orbs in the city center, sitting higher than any other skyscraper around it. It was the Equestria Bank building. The city around it was dead, no sign of life from where I stood, and only the wind and sea to push away the quiet. In the distance I saw what looked like a pony made of plastic, or something like that, walking towards me, slowly, yellow eyes shining. It said in a monotone voice, you are trespassing. You must be destroyed. I pulled Dreamwalker out and took the creature out with a single shot. I then winced as I started to head towards the fallen body, then I stopped. It was a robot. What could it have on it that could be of use to me? I didn't need to worry about that right now. What I really needed to know was where my friends were, why I'd awoken up here, and why in the goddess's name was I standing alone on a beach in La Solicorn. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Local hero. Rank 1. As a heroic icon in the Merave, you've made quite the impression among factions in the area. Some factions, if inspired, will fight along with you, without the need to join any specific faction. 